welcome back to Bunsen's Yard. So today we're doing a, um, I kind of been trying to do this for the last year and a half, I think. This is like a flaky paint, sort of paint chipping effect. Um, but the idea is that the, the paint will come off in, uh, in bigger flakes and make it look like um, the paint's peeled off. And you might recognize this wagon. This is from um, the last video we did, which was on uh, paint stripping. So uh, this is the reason I wanted this uh, stripped back. But anyway, let's um, just make it easier. Let's take it apart. That just makes it easier. I've got to mess around masking up the uh, the chassis and, and so on. So let's just pop it apart, and then we'll find something appropriate to uh, to hold it with. Now, with any um, sort of chipping effect, the idea is that what we do is that um, you kind of work backwards. So the the layer at the bottom, the layer we're going to put on next is is the one that we want to show through the chipping. So in this particular case, it's going to be wood, and we'll use these two colours. These are just two kind of randomly coloured. It says light grey brown. I'm not sure if it is, but it's uh, uh, and that one's light grey. But it's they're they're two sort of old faded wood colours from the uh, the AK faded wood um, kit. So it's already primed in grey. So I don't need to be too fussy uh, because a lot of this isn't, isn't going to show through anyway. Because we're going to have a top colour on top of it. But it's just to kind of suggest, um, you know, the old paint underneath. You may want to use, um, you know, a different colour underneath. You might want to paint it white and then green on top and that sort of thing. Just to, um, you know, so that it looks like the, the, the top colours come off and you're seeing the old colour underneath. Or you may want to choose primers or rust. It's entirely up to you. But we're doing like a, a an old um, faded wood effect. So I'm just doing this fairly... Um, Sort of loose and randomly it won't um, like I say we're not going to see too much of this um, in the finished effect anyway so um, just some different uh, variations on the uh, on the planks of wood so some may be older and newer than the, than the others and the colors will change very slightly and you can take as much time as you need with this effect so you could um, you could even uh, you sort of dry brush or uh, or pin wash to make it you know the the planks stand out a little bit more but uh for us this is uh this is enough so the ends of these uh this particular uh, van is corrugated so we are just going to paint that uh brown to start with um, and then we'll just build up a rust rust sort of color towards the end and these bits down the end we'll paint those in as well with a brush with the airbrush um, on your old model don't forget you'll probably want to take a bit more care i'm just doing this for um, a bit of speed i'm a bit impatient i want to get to the end to see if our, uh, our fine for master actually uh, does what i'm hoping it's going to be doing again on the on the roof we're going to add the effect on the roof as well and um you know those um, ribs or whatever they are whatever they would be called they uh, um, I'm assuming they're gonna rust or anyway just adds a bit of the a bit of texture a bit of a uh, bit of interest to the roof when the uh, when the paint uh, chips and flakes away so you will see something happening underneath rather than an expense of just plain gray these bits again I'm not taking too much time on these I just want to add a bit of uh, a bit of color into these so that uh, again if the paint uh, should chip or or flake from those particular um, angle pieces then um, it will just differentiate it really as a different color from the from the rest of the wagon so it doesn't look like it's you know wood so it gives the impression of it being um, old rusty still or iron if I was doing this um, you know as, a, as a, a proper model rather than just a test piece like this I'd probably take a bit more time a bit more care and uh, yeah, maybe use a finer brush as well 
but this is just uh, again a lot of this you won't see um, and you won't see the the, uh, the, the shoddy paintwork that I'm uh, doing at the moment uh, now so on the uh, the ends I just want to add in another color this is mahogany and this is just a brighter sort of uh, ready uh, brown model air color and it just um, adds, adds a variety of rust effect to that particular area and we'll just paint this in on the ends and that's us pretty much done for this bit So this is our medium that we're going to use. This is our Asda craft glue. This is kind of a rubberized glue um, from Asda, just 60 pence for a 38 mil. So it's quite inexpensive if you compare it to things like, um, you know, the Vallejo and the other um, brands of chipping fluids. But this works a different way. Uh, most chipping fluids are reactivated by um, by water, basically. So the uh, the water would soak through the top coat of paint. Um, and um, sort of reactivate and release that middle layer. This is a, a kind of rubber glue, so uh, this doesn't need water. This would hopefully, with a little bit of uh, encouragement, will just flake off and uh, leave us like a uh, like a flaky paint, really. And um, whereas normal chipping fluids would, um, everything comes off in, in you know it's just it's just gone basically. Uh, this will hopefully leave some flakes of paint um, on the on the model, so like a 3D texture, rather than just being a, a flat effect. So we're going to uh, try and get this fairly fairly thin. We don't want it too thick. Um, it does have a tendency to pull up, as you can see, sort of around the uh, around the detail lines there. So um, just brushing this back as much as I can, but it does actually, in fact, um, it dries um, much smoother than it would uh, would appear there at the moment. But I'm just trying to get it uh, sort of as as um, smooth and consistent as I, as I can. Now I've seen this done before with um, a glue called Copy Dex. If you've not um, if you're not familiar with, familiar with that, it's a latex glue, which is uh, if you white when you apply it and it dries clear so I was quite um, keen to get something that was clear and it ends up clear as well if you use uh, things like liquid mask which you can buy from you know Vallejo and uh, and the other manufacturers they're normally colored whether they're going to be pink or blue or purple or whatever um, and we didn't want that um, any color added to this so I was just looking for a clear fluid that we could use and uh, this looked like it might work I've tried this out on some sort of test pieces, uh, just pieces of plastic really, um, and it seems to work. So this is the first one I've done where the um, where we've had colours. So that's it. That's all dry. Uh, I left that overnight. It took a little while to dry, and it's got a, a very slight rubber texture. So uh, fingers crossed for this that it's going to uh, going to work out for us. Well, actually, if you've seen the thumbnail, you know what's going to happen anyway. But um, so at this point I didn't actually know if it was going to work. So this is the colour we were using, uh, BR Green from a company called Roots Rail, I've never used them before, but um, they had the colours. And I wanted it a bit lighter to give a fade effect, so I'm just adding a bit of sand colour in. Um, and um, the Roots Rail needs to be thinned down by the looks of it. I've never used that either before, This is I've got that new for a different project. Uh, so we've thinned it down and we'll give it a a few light coats of this uh, green now you might want uh, you know your your base layer rather than be old wood it might want to be you know the previous color of the wagon um, or whatever it is entirely up to you now the idea for using the sand to lighten the green rather than white if you add white to green it has then to become a bit sort of minty and we don't want it to look like mint we wanted it to look 
uh, faded paint so you would add um, uh, like a, a beige or a tan color in there or you know a light sand in this particular case it just makes it a bit lighter without it going minty if you know what I mean And again, you can take more time if you want to add any sort of, you know, if you want to add a specific fade effect or any sort of modulation, um, then uh, this would be the time to do it. But for this particular exercise, I think we're just going to paint everything in uh, in green, except for the roof, of course. Now the roof I'm going to use. This is a dark panzer grey. It's just a, a grey that was on the uh, on the rack. I'm not masking this particular one. If I um, if you airbrush from a, a particular angle, um, it'll just run off the end, and we uh, we don't need to mask if we're careful. I'm working on the assumption that the, the roof is um, painted or it's got a sort of um, bitumen on the top or something like that. I'm not sure, to be honest, what these are normally covered in. But um, I have seen, uh, seen them when they flake, so uh, I'm hoping um, this is appropriate for this particular one. And then the final bit is just to... Uh, a bit of a uh, bit of color they normally oh, possibly once I've seen have been uh, have been painted you can leave them the same color as the wagon if you want to I guess and I'm just going to do these these four corners and that'll probably be uh, probably be about it I'll, I'll probably do the doors as well to be honest the hinges on the door I think need uh, Maybe need some colour as well, so I'll do those as well in a second. So at the moment we're waiting for that to see if this effect actually works. Um, so what I've um, sort of from the, the test I've done before, I think the best way to do it is to just start the chipping or the flaking in a random way wherever you want normally in between the uh, the slats that's where it was uh, that's where it would start from and we're just going to encourage it you can see it just uh, it's, it's very soft it does uh, does chip away really really easily now you can leave it at that if you choose uh, depends on how far you want to go with your chipping uh, what we've decided to do is to use a bit of masking tape uh, just something you don't want it too sticky and if we just there we go you can see so the masking tape then just starts to pull up the paint and uh, and lift it which is exactly the uh, the effect that we're after You want to do any more? We just go a bit. This is a cocktail stick. Uh, we're just going to go in with a cocktail stick and encourage it a little bit more. Not sure about that. I'm going to take that bit off. I think it doesn't look like a very flaky paint at all, does it? But you can see the effect. So hopefully, uh, so that sort of starts to demonstrate what I had in mind for this particular one. And you can see as it chips, it does leave uh, some of the flakes behind. And I think once they're uh, they're properly weathered in, they will look uh, they look just fine. Just try. Let's um, pop that on and just give it a bit of a bit of a rub down. 
So a bit more dramatic, that particular one. And all the doors as well. So seven all the doors being fairly random with these. Oh, I personally like the, the fact that it's just the uh, the, the paint um, just hangs there in sort of uh, sheets or flakes um, and it will give that texture that you won't get with um, chipping fluid normally because it um, the way it works and it washes away so you end up with just uh, just the colors and not that sort of uh, that third dimension so that's uh, that's kind of the main thing I was after was that sort of paint that's um, sort of come off but not quite departed yet it's just sort of hanging there now experiment with different tapes and uh, different techniques if you've got um, you know sellotape would take much more off because it's much more sticky um, we're using a sort of low tech um, masking, uh, masking tape for this particular one now on the uh, the corrugations it need a bit more encouragement so we're just gonna run across the high spots on this and then we can, uh, we can pull the paint backwards and if you want to get a bit more off you just need to dig down into the uh, into the little valleys in between the the corrugations and again we can just uh, get some tape and pull that back That's it for now, that will do for that bit, I think. So I'm just going to give it a try with a uh, with a blade on this on the edge, just try and soften the edge up. So uh, it looks like the uh, the rust has started to uh, to blow the paint away. Now the roof, uh, the the first bit of it I've missed uh, with a with a uh, camera, so uh, we'll just do a second one. So we're just making a small mark on the top with a uh, with a blade in this particular case, really just lightly, bit of tape and then it rips it off in sheets um, so uh, that's kind of really what I was after it's where the paint is uh, is peeled back or the, or the bitumen sheet or whatever it is on the top as um, oh, the felt isn't it bitumen felt as, uh, as sort of peeled back on the top there and we'll leave that we won't um, we won't sort of take that off we'll leave that flake because that was uh, one of the main things that we're after but it is quite delicate, so we're going to need to protect that anyway. So just uh, just soften the edges up, and then we'll call that uh, call that done on that, and I'll do the rest of the wagon off camera. So we're going to add some weathering powder on just to finish the effect. Now this, uh, I just wanted to show you this. This is uh, a green one on the front there is a chrome oxide this is the humbrol version uh, but it's very green you only use it in its raw state on your model because it is just too green so we're going to mix it in with some uh, humbrol dark earth um, until you get the kind of desired effect and we're going to use this mainly to uh, sort of simulate um, moss and algae and that sort of thing 
um, where where it would uh, sort of settle on the wood. And we're just going to brush it on fairly gently. It's quite a subtle effect, um, but we'll use it uh, on the roof as well. And we can always add some more in afterwards. Now this was uh, I've used a, uh, a a gloss enamel lacquer to uh, to sort of uh, stabilise everything because the uh, the flakes are fairly sort of um, um, fragile. Um, in hindsight, I should have used a, a matte lacquer because the uh, the uh, the weathering powders don't take to the gloss particularly well. So I'm going to have to add a bit more in afterwards. So uh, yeah, so if you have an opportunity to do this and uh, you're going to put in that that sort of stabilising layer, then satin or a, or a matte um, lacquer would be better than than gloss. But anyway, we'll persevere. We'll crack on. So these particular rust colours are from the um, Vallejo, sort of, uh, I, think it's, I think it's called Rust, it's a, it's a kit that they, uh, that they make and there's um, six colours or four colours in the, in the pack, um, different shades of brown and the yellow and so on. Um, but these are really, really nice uh, powders to work with. Just uh, just with any powder, just little and often really. Um, it's easier to put more on than it is to take it off. I think I've said that once or twice before. So that's it pretty much done for now. Um, because it's all glossy and shiny, it looks a, a bit wrong. Um, I think the effect isn't full there. So uh, we're giving it a, um, a lacquer um, with uh, our new favourite um, lacquer which is the uh, the ultra matte lacquer from uh, AK Interactive. Let me, just, um, let me just show you that. Ultra varnish, ultra matte varnish. Um, it is really, really, once it dries, it's very, very flat, very sort of matte. Um, and that will complete the effect because it looks all nice and shiny and it looks a, bit, a little bit odd, I think. But while it's still a little bit damp, we'll add some more weathering powder in where it's um, not taken to the to the gloss varnish too well and uh, where some gets washed away um, so that's what happens when you put it on in, uh, straight from the the, uh, the green without it being mixed in so it's a little bit too green there so I'll add some weathering powder on top of that just to uh, just to knock that back a little bit And then we'll give it another coat of the uh, VAK um, matte varnish. Now with the varnish, I suggest you let the uh, the first layer dry for about five or ten minutes properly, and then give it another another pass. Um, it kind of needs needs two, I think, would uh, would uh, give the effect, you know, the full uh, the full drying time. So we give another coat of uh, our matte varnish, and that's it, pretty much done for this one. So this was really just uh, as an experiment to see if this uh, this actually works. You can see the the way the the, the paint has has flaked and sort of uh, some of it has remained on there as a texture, which is exactly what we're after. Um, so yeah, hopefully you know, you found this useful and uh, you might find a a space for the uh, as the clear glue in your uh, in your weathering armory. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for joining us. If you're not already subscribed, please do that. If you're not joining us on Patreon, uh, the link's in the description. We'll see you on Patreon for some extra content. And uh, bye for now.